Hello everybody and welcome to Northern Card Gaming. My name is Andrew Brown and today we'll be looking at the fall of Turbo Dark. A bit of a different topic than I normally do on this channel but I thought it was important to do just because of it kind of affects me a bit just because I like the deck so much but I want to talk about the fall of it. Last video I did about the Greninja deck I wanted to do a Dark Ride deck and after a lot of testing with a lot of people I realized that Darkrai in this current meta ain't great. And to explain why it ain't great, I've got to sort of go back in time and talk about when it really was great. And that's why I've got a lot of cards up here that obviously isn't in Darkrai, but affect Darkrai. There's a few grey ones because I don't own actual copies of them. So let's talk about Darkrai itself from what it actually was when it came out in Breakpoint in 2016. Well, it revolves, or it revolves around Dark Rai EX from said breakpoint. Had 180 uh, HE? The hell's that? 180 HP from breakpoint, obviously. And it was dark type. And I was a witness to fighting and resistance to psychic. And it did have two attacks, but really only had one. It had Dark Pulse, which for double colorless energy, or more accurately, two darkness energy, just due to the, the, the attack itself, it does. 20 plus 20 for each darkness energy attached to all of your Pokemon. So, what does that mean? Well, it means that if you have 10 dark energy on your side of the field on any of your Pokemon, Dark Rai will be doing 220 damage. 10 times 20, of course, get to 200, and then plus 20 for base is 220. So, you see the idea of the deck get a lot of dark energy out on the field. Keep it in play with cards like EXP Share and Fighting Fury Belt to keep the Dark Rise alive. And you can then, if you really want to, you could get Darkness Energy back using the Living Wing of Elthol. And accelerate the energy using Max Elixir. And that's how Dark Rise worked. It ramped. It went from maybe a 80 in turn 1 to potentially... 140 and then it kept going and going and going and going and when you killed one the energy just, just went to the bench and the energy never left and the attack never went down. That's why it was so good because yes it was slow to start but my god when it ramped it ramped. If you got two lictors off that was that was 40 damage on the, on the board. Another 10 for the fighting fury belt and then you got another 20 and it just keep on going 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 going. That's why the deck was so good. Uh, it did very, very well. It was very, very good. Destroyed constantly and consistently. Quite a good deck. It was also played with um, Giratina and the Dragon Energy. Because Double Dragon could give two Darkness. Because it kind of any energy. And also Giratina helped out in certain matches. So that's what it was originally paired with. Eventually it evo evolved into a pure Dark Rai with Hoopas and Shamans. Because Hoopa could get... Uh, all the Dark Rise, and then obviously Shaman is Shaman to draw more cards to get into more elixirs to get more Dark Rise evolving and creating and destroying. So it was quite a good deck, and even during Sun and Moon, when we had Decidueye Valplum running around, not letting you able to play your items, uh, you still did very well because on your first turn, uh, on your turn, you could Hex Maniac, and then you could put all your tra all your uh, tools down. Try and get as many um, electrodes off as possible, and really you wouldn't lose much. Because as soon as you got your, your tools down, there was no tool removal, bar Beedrill, at that time. So you just play your EXP shares, they can't get rid of them, and then the energy stays. And you did quite well against Decidueye. And that was pretty damn good. You did very well. The only decks you were worried about, really, was Volcanian and Mega Rayquaza, and the reason why you're worried about these ones is because they could want to KO you very quickly, especially Mega Ray. Mega Ray could do 240 on the first go, using Mega Turbos and DCEs. So that was a pretty horrible match at times, just because if they went off, didn't do very well. A Volcanian, very similar, it could want to KO you very quickly if it got off quick enough, which is also wasn't very good. So only one hit KO was pretty bad for you. But overall your matches were very, very good. And then came Guardians Rising. When the accidental power creep was astronomical. Within that one set, we not only got Drampa, which could hit 180 by turn 2 with a choice band. Knocking out a Dark Rai. Tapibulu came out quite close, um, quite close to that. 
back and hit 180 with, with no choice band. You can do 210 with it with, with a choice band, well, along with the Vika Vault from Sun and Moon. That came out, as did Nine Tails, which with a choice band can do 190 using Blizzard Edge. The power creep suddenly went mad. A card I don't have here as well was Metagross, which also did 180 with a choice band. This meant that Dark Rye really wasn't well placed because it had 180 HP and could get knocked out very quickly, which was a problem with the deck early on. So, uh, but you're going, well, that's okay. You had Fury Belt. Fury Belt was quite a good card for this because it meant that you have 40 HP and they would have to two hit KO you. And then Field Blower came out. And when Field Blower came out um, in the same set, that people thought that was the nail in the coffin. Because now, the biggest thing, reason you played Dark Rai, the fact you could EXP share and keep everything on the board, was gone. These could get Field Blowered. Your EXP shares could get Field Blowered. Your Fury Bells could get Field Blowered, or your Choice Bands in this in, in some cases, could get Field Blowered, and then you're done to 180 HP, and then everything won a KO and the energy doesn't stay on, you go down quite a lot, and you can't get back from that. That's, and that was what people thought might happen. But it didn't. As shown by Nico Alabas in Birmingham, Lele still a Lele build of Tapu, of, uh, Tapu, of Tapu Lele, I guess, of Dark Rise still did very, very well. It was just a slower variant, and it just said, right, I know you can field blower me, but you got to get that field blower and, and make sure that you know, I can kill you first. And it seemed to work. The fact it had resistance also meant that Garb wasn't really a super duper problem if you were clue if you were good enough with your items. That was very, very good for the deck. It was it was a very, very I guess it worked. It was just a consistent build. It was consistent. It played four of everything. Had a had a instead of a Bridget, it used a fan club so that it could get two of the EX and get the whole bunch out. Because you still used your Velpo, you had also the moon, which allowed you to get Free retreat on your dark eyes, as well as your Yveltals, anything that had darkness energy attached to it. And then you just keep hitting Dark Pulse like you always did before. And it worked out very, very well for him getting a copy at that Birmingham Regional in the same one as Gyarados and the Zoroark, which also played Drampa, which is very, very bad for the deck. And so we thought the future was a bit brighter for Dark Rai. We thought that, yes. We've gone all through all these random stuff, we've gone through all this, but Dark Rai EX is still going to be okay. The attack is still good enough, and clearly it works, because people were able to pilot it to a much, much good, uh, well, much, much good, a much better rating than people thought it might. The top eight events, it did quite well. But then Burning Shadows came out, and we thought, oh my god, we've got a Dark Rai GX, Restoration Dark Rai. Once during your uh, your turn, if this Pokemon's in your discard pile, you can put it onto your bench and attach a dark energy to it from your discard pile. Suddenly, we didn't need Uveltal very much because we can now Uveltal three times without even attacking on the same turn with Darkrai. With Darkrai GX. So you go Darkrai, Elixir, Elixir, hopefully get the thing going, and then you get Darkrai GX twice onto your bench, and then there's 40 damage, and now you could suddenly hit the numbers. We thought it was going to be okay for that. We thought, yes, brilliant. You're gonna get more Dark Rise support. Dark Rise, Dark Pulse could still be a very, very good deck, and we're all gonna be happy with Dark Rise. Then we saw Marsh Shadow, which it's a bit of a tackable counter, which ain't great, and any tackable counter is never good for any deck. But it was like, okay, a lot of decks we're seeing aren't playing many big basics. Maybe Drampa could um, could play it, but Drampa's already got an okay match against Dark Rise. Doesn't really need Marshadow. It just makes it like an, a bit of a better win for it. And we're like, okay, we're okay with Marshadow. We can cope with that. Some decks mightn't play it. Dark Rise might be able to win events, go away for a while, then come back. We thought good. And then the real nail in the coffin came in with Guard of War. Guard of War resisted Dark Rise. It oh, it also did damage. It also did. Uh, 30 times the amount of <laughs> energy on both Pokemon, so it, Darkrai was giving up 60 damage instantly. They couldn't really one hit KO the Guardies without a lot of energy on the field, and then Choice Ban, which you didn't, and you can play really Choice Ban by this point because you need a Fury Belt. And then it wasn't good, the ability wasn't making it any better, and then we've remembered the fact that Guard of War has the ability to play a Fighting Attacker in Galliad. 
A lot of decks play Galliard because it gets round the nine tails from Burning Shadows, the one that stops GXs and EXs. It gets round that quite easily because it can do 130 and knock it out. And the Premonition ability is really good for it because you already often plays the artillery, so you can use the old Galliard artillery combo. And well, yeah, that wasn't good. The most played deck around our area is Guard is Guardy. Um, at least two to three people play it. And well, you can't really play Darkrai in that in that format because of this bad boy. Also, Bulu, which is still hard for Darkrai, just because well, they can want to KO you very quickly, even without choice band is with a field blower and they often play three field blower in Bulu just to get round um the Garbodor kind of thing. Because obviously Garbodor, Garbodor Toxin really hurts Bulu um Vika Vault. And that's when Dark Rai kind of went, well, this is kind of our end of the road really, isn't it? It might come back. I hope it does. Um I don't think it's very good in this meta. People still play it. I still play it. I still love the deck. Um it's just I don't think it's very well versed. I think the typing is not great. The weakness is really not good. And I do love it. I hope I hope it does have the ability to work in this meta eventually. Maybe if a lot of metal come in and is able to take out a lot of these sort of guardy decks, then maybe Darkrai comes in again because then a lot of fighting won't be there and people mightn't. People might forget about Dark Ride just because it's such a it's a, it's getting it's getting on a bit in terms of people remembering what it does and remembering the deck. There's a lot of other decks that people want to play instead, so it might just slip on the radar. It might do very well in an event if metal gets very big, because it is quite a good combo having this and this, just two Dark Rides that, synerg that are very synergetic with each other. Um, with the new Nile Eagle that comes out with the Ultra Beast, it does mean you can play that as a one off. Because the ability allows you to poison and confuse both the active Pokemons, which means that dead end GX can actually work. Because now you've got a GX attack that can just knock out anything for nothing. Which is not bad. Well for three energy. But it's not that's not, not bad. We trade off really. So now Lego might come in to try and give yourself a GX attack. That's November. But I don't think the Dark Pulse attack is gone. Dark Riot itself might be, but the Dark Pulse attack might not. There's a new Raichu GX coming out in the Shining Legends uh, Wii small expansion coming out in, I think, October, maybe. And that has two attacks again, but it has a very it has the same attack as Dark Pulse, 20 plus 20 for each lightning energy. Except it's lightning energy this time. It's got 210 HP. I can't show you a picture of it here because it's not on here, but I'm just telling you what I've got well, from memory. It has the same attack and also has quite a good secondary attack for three energy. Uh, I forget the I forget the uh, full call. I think it's light and light and colorless. I think it can do 160. It does 32 itself, but it's 160, 190 with choice band. That means you've got an early game attack that Dark Pulse never had. Dark Pulse had Dark Pulse or Oblivion Wing. Raichu has quite. If you get enough enough on the Raichu, because with uh, actually it might be able to because you have this Electrode from. Because you have the Electrode from Evolutions, it allows you to get double uh, double Lightning Energy on your Pokemon for a, a prize. But that means you sort of you make them play the, the the seven prize game. You could use this Electrode, get use that to power up your Raichus quickly, so that they can knock out things. So they can get the knockout on some early, and then late game you can use all the energy that you've achieved along, along with the Raik, the, the new Raikou, which is basically a Living Wing of Elthol. For, a, for lightning Pokemon, you can use that, use your, your electrode you got on, and you can build up the energy for the late game surges. And I think that's how the deck, that's how that attack, that all energy on the board, and then attack um, type of uh, deck, will still be able to play with Raichu. I still think it's good, because the energy buff's quite good, sorry, the energy, the HP buff's quite good, which means that you're not worried really about Drampa one hit KO on you. Um, still, same weakness of fighting, which isn't great, but you're going to have to sort of take that. I'm okay with that, if the deck's better. Um, elect, you'll have to do Elixir to Pikachu, not Raichu, because it's an evil evolution. You could, I guess, Elixir to your Lele's, or maybe even play the uh, Breakthrough Raikou as like a wee secondary attacker kind of thing. You could also Elixir to that and have Lightning on the board. So, that might be how Dark Pulse itself lives on. It might live on through... 
uh, Raichu GX. But as for this Dark Pulse and this Dark Rai, I think it might be curtains for it. That's why I think it's the fall. It might be time to sleeve it and wait for a much better meta and move on to better decks. So I hope you enjoyed this wee look at Dark Rai. Um, if, you like, if you like the type of video that I'm doing here where I look at a certain deck, go through its history and then explain why it's not as good anymore, please please leave a comment and say if you like it or not. Or that's up to you. That's up to you if you want. Hopefully you have really like it. I hope you liked, liked doing these sort of videos because I like doing these videos. I like telling people why a deck's good or bad or not bad but not using this more format anymore a bit like dark pulse so thank, thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you again soon this has been andrew brian from northern card gaming and i'll see you again soon bye